few weeks ago, this patient had undergone a combined phacovitrectomy due to a blunt trauma that had induced cornea edema, iris sphincter damage, cataract and retina detachment. Now he returns to remove the emulsified silicon oil. After removing it all, we are faced by a sticky silicon oil bubble since the opacified media in the prior surgery didn't allow to complete the procedure. Sticky oil happens when a longer term silicon oil tamponade mixes with remnant perfluorocarbon producing an extremely viscous and dense liquid solution that is difficult to be removed. The surgeon might solve it by aspirating the inferior part of the bubble where the PFO is located but in some times that is quite impossible. So we present an alternative solution which was found in the oldest sport competition in the world, the America's Cup. Presenting this year the mighty AC-75, a sailing yacht capable to reach 60 miles per hour, we will talk about the crew members who inspired our technique, the grinders. While trimmers are responsible for the boat sail and trimming the loop to get the boat as fast as possible, grinders are at max heart rate during 25 minutes. These guys are responsible for moving the winches, moving the hydraulic pumps and making sure the boat has enough power to sail around the course at max speed. Here we reproduce the grinder's movements in order to create a centrifugation process inside the sticky oil bubble to agglutinate the PFO droplets. Once they form a bigger bubble, it will be easier to aspirate them, like here, where we can clearly see the perfluorocarbon liquid leaving the silicon. Or like here, where we can see gravity acting on the mixture and, because of its weight, the PFO leaves the silicon oil bubble. Now that the PFO has fallen, the silicon bubble is again lighter than BSS and floats, allowing the surgeon to make a complete silicon oil removal. Despite sticky oil cases are not very common, some months later we had a similar case where we had the chance to prove our theory. This time the sticky bubble was much bigger and the PFO wasn't very clear, but after a few grinds the PFO droplets started to agglutinate again and to become visible. After the PFO aspiration, the silicon oil came up and it could be completely removed. Oops, but watch it, we have a small portion of sticky oil really stick to the retina. So we gently aspirate the PFO first and then, with much attention, we aspirate the silicon part. Since it didn't work, we tried to use the grinder technique on it to see if we could release it from the retina and watch out what happened. Now yes, the silicon oil could be completely aspirated. Remember that safety is always our number one concern, so you must be very careful when using the grinder technique at the macula, since it shouldn't be touched. Be gentle and delicate. Back to our first case, see how the presence of PFO provoked retinal inflammation. The posterior hyaloid that we couldn't see is now thickened and more adhered. So let's treat what we were not able to do at the first surgery. I hope this film might help you all. Thanks for your attention. And while I finish here, I wish you all a nice sailing.